In this video, you'll learn how to make a cool embers effect using Unity and Shader Graph. Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy, here to help you. Who? Me? Yes, you. Make your game dev dreams become reality by helping you make fancy VFX using Shader Graph. In this video, I'm going to be using Unity 2022, which is the current LTS at this time, which has URP 14 and Shader Graph 14 as well. But all the stuff's been around for quite a while, so whatever versions you're using should probably be fine. Conceptually, the shader's just three generated noise textures, all scrolling at different speeds. Then we control the strength of some of these using sine, time, and the object's Y position. It ends up looking a little bit scary, but when we go step by step, it's really not super complicated. Let's go. In the scene, we've just got some logs that are part of a fire, and we'd like to apply a shader to some object over here to get that cool ember effect. So in our assets shaders folder, we can just right click, create shader graph URP, and we'll use a lit shader. And we'll call this embers. If we just double click that, it opens up shader graph. And we double click on top, that maximizes our window. So this is gonna be a tri noise map effect to get us the really nice embers looking thing. And to do that, we usually start with some scrolling UVs. So in our blackboard, we can create some variables. So let's start with a float speed, a float cell density, a color base color, and a vector two direction. I always like to give these some reasonable defaults, but first on our graph settings, let's change a couple of things. We wanna use the specular workflow. It's gonna be a transparent material. We'll do alpha blending mode. Probably we wanna render on both faces. We don't wanna cast or receive shadows. Now in the node settings, Speed, we'll just give it a default of one. Cell density, maybe five. Base color, we'll probably want some kind of orangey color and it needs to be HDR. Let's do something like that. And for the direction, we'll pick maybe a slowly going up and to the side, something like that. So to get a scrolling UV, we just do time times speed and multiply that with the direction. That can go into tiling offset, offset, and then the output of tiling and offset can go to that Voronoi. So we can see the noise is scrolling in a direction. Then we can customize our cell density with whatever five, so it looks almost the same. And the angle offset just controls how these are aligned. So picking some value, maybe 25 would be okay. Importantly on this, the white areas are not what we want. We want the little orb insides, so we want to do a one minus and that gives us the inside parts. But even this, this doesn't look like embers, right? It looks like eggs almost running out of space. Move this over to the left. So we can use a smooth step node. We do smooth step in. That gives us a little bit different look. And as we adjust our edges, we can get basically dots. So it'd be nice to be able to customize these on the shader. Let's add two floats, step min, step max. Let's give those some defaults. Step min maybe 0.1, step max 0.25. And let's make these both sliders where the step min is default of 0.01, max of 0.1, and the step max is default of 0.25 and max of 0.25. Let's hook those up. And that gives us more like dots, which is the base of the effect that we're looking for here. If we just multiply this with the color, Now we have bright orange dots. So we take this to base color and emissive. That's gonna start getting us to what we wanna see. Let's just make a sphere for the time being. And if we select the shader graph and right click in the materials folder to create a material, it'll create a material with that shader. And we can call this embers as well. And let's apply that over here. So they're going kind of the wrong direction. We probably need to flip them over. Now they go up but this black is obviously wrong. So we're starting to make progress, but not quite there. It's also very shiny. So we'll probably remove smoothness, set the specular color to be fully black. And we need something with the alpha. So we probably wanna split this last output and take the alpha channel to the alpha. Just save that real fast. And that looks a lot better. Cool. So that's noise number one, nothing too crazy so far. All the other noises scroll speeds are going to be derived from the output of this multiply. So we're going to make all of their scroll speeds a function of the original scroll speed. So we don't have like a million variables. So the second one we want to use is a simple noise. And since we're going to do a lot of 
stuff off from this, we're gonna move this over. But for this one, let's divide it. I'm gonna use by one on the X and 1.5 on the Y to keep the X value the same and reduce the Y. We can take that to a tiling and offset, offset. And take that to a simple noise. Now we have that noise scrolling. We probably wanna control this scale in the inspector. So let's go ahead and add that Blackboard variable, a float for noise size, give it a value of maybe 25 by default. Bring that in. It's now more cloudy looking and that's where we're gonna get that ember effect coming off those circles. And we said this can be tri-mapped noise. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's get our third noise. So we're gonna take our divide output. I'm just gonna multiply it by two, which is the default and have this then go into a tiling and offset. That goes to a gradient noise. Now this one scrolls a lot faster and let's make this scale a function of this noise size. This one's a lot smaller at the same scale. So we're gonna reduce the noise size by maybe a factor of five and that makes this a lot bigger. Now this looks kind of ugly now, let's rearrange. We'll multiply the two noises, but this is probably too dark. We wanna make it more intense. So why don't we take this to a power and then multiply it with our Voronoi before it goes into the smooth step. Now this looks kind of ugly now, let's rearrange. Now this is starting to look like some embers potentially. Let's take a look. Obviously our current values are not good. <laughs> so we just tweak those a little bit to look more like this. We're making progress. This is looking a lot better but we have probably too many embers. And at the top, we might want them to fade out. So there's still some things to do. We can make our power pulse. So instead of just doing a flat two, so that, that way it's not as intense all the time, that'll weaken some of this stuff that's going on. So let's add a pulse speed. Give that a default of like 0.25. Multiply that with time. Take that into a sign, remap it, sign as negative one to one, let's go 0 0.25 to one. Take the object position, split it, and multiply the remapped pulse speed by the Y component of the object position. This gives us a stronger effect the higher up on the Y this is. If we take this out to that power, there, now it's a lot less intense, right? So we can start playing with our steps where we have small little particles, we have bigger flame things going on. That looks a little bit better. We can see that it gets more flamey on top because we're using that object Y component. It might be nicer though, if we had it start somewhat flamey and become even more flamey the farther up it went. Let's take the Y component to a saturate, which will give us a value clamped between zero and one. Then we remap that with an in min max of zero to one and an output min max, something like 0 0.25 to one. So we're basically just lifting up the floor from zero to 0 0.25. If we play with the pulse speed, we can see the intensity of the flame pulses in and out. You can play with the remap floor and this pulse speed to tweak the look of the effect. The shape you choose can also dramatically change the effect. Using Pro Builder, we can try a different mesh like a cone. So this is something also you have to be a little bit careful with, depending on your object, because we're using the UVs. If they're not set up to be smooth and set up correctly, you can get weird looking effects like this. For a cone, if we just go ahead and select all of them, open up the UV editor in Pro Builder, say convert to auto. If we say group selected faces, treats them basically as one big face, we can set the tiling back to one, reset the offset and say that we want maybe fill mode to be fit. Go ahead and close this. Now they're doing a little bit nicer thing. So let's flip them over. And these top faces, we probably just don't want anymore. So we can select those with the face select tool. Delete faces. And we might want to center our pivot. So if we use the vertex selection, select all of these and say set pivot, that aligns them over here a little bit nicer. If we just quickly align our cone over our wood and disable the sphere, 
Now, obviously this doesn't look quite right on one side it's going down and on the other side it's coming up. So what we can do to fix this is have it have two different groups of faces instead of just one. I'm gonna do that by splitting the object into two and manipulating the UVs independently. So if we select this half and detach faces, now we have two that are going in different directions. And if we select the one that's going down and flip the V, it starts going up. But we'll notice that the other object is still going down. So we have to break the selected groups and then group this as a new group. And we'll start seeing that's working correctly. But since we flipped the V on the other object, we need to undo that so we can select all of those spaces, open up the UV editor. We can just regroup them and flip the V again. Now both sides are going up. And if you missed any faces, like what I did here, you can just make sure that you stitch those together. In Pro Builder, you can do that with the UV editor open and press Control and select them. Once we've aligned all of our UVs and made sure that the faces are grouped properly, our embers effect is starting to look pretty cool. Anytime you're dealing with shaders or VFX of any kind, I always encourage you to play around with whatever we've created in the tutorial, play around with the values, and even come up with some different combinations of nodes that you might use as inputs in different areas so you get a better understanding of how to achieve this effect and how you can manipulate the effect to get a unique look of your own. I actually cover this effect in even more detail in my shader graph course. In there, we combine it with some textureless fire shader and some textureless smoke to make a more complete dynamic generated textureless fire effect. If you found some of this maybe was out of your league, I recommend you check out that shader graph course where we go and have a more comprehensive learning pathway about all of these nodes and what everything does before we get into a more advanced shader like this. Depending on when you're watching this, that course may not be out like if you're watching this day one, Probably that's not out yet, but that course is coming out really soon. So whenever it's there, I'll have that linked in the description. That's a really great way for you to show your support for this channel and you get to learn a bunch of stuff about shader graph. Some other ways you can support this channel are liking and subscribing. That helps the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. Some other ways that you can support the channel are you can use the affiliate links down in the description. That helps me out a lot and there's no extra charge to you. You could also become a YouTube member or Patreon supporter. That allows you to participate in monthly topic polls where you can help drive the direction of the channel. Speaking of those supporters, at the phenomenal tier, there's Andrew Bowen. At the tremendous tier, there's Bruno Bozic. At the awesome tier, there's Autumn K, Ivan, Rulin, Ify Obelis, and Perry. And there's also all of these great supporters as well. Thank you all for your support. I am so incredibly grateful.